Hello everyone, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards, and in this lesson number 191, uh, we'll take a look at identifying components with a technique I call the Entity Trap. And as a matter of fact, based on that name, you might guess, yes, this is a technique, but it's an anti-pattern. I want to show you how to avoid it. <laughs> so you can get a listing of all the lessons I do in Software Architecture Monday um, at my website at developer2architect.com slash lessons. Now, <clears throat> two weeks ago, um, I did lesson 190 on July 1st of 2024, where I talked about logical versus physical architecture. Um, if you haven't seen that lesson yet, I would highly recommend uh, pausing this video and actually going to my website and looking at lesson 190, uh, because it do does give some background uh, for what we're about to see. And as a matter of fact, in Lesson 190, uh, we saw the example of the SysOps squad. So I'm not going to reiterate that since I did that two weeks ago. But what we did in Lesson 190 was we kind of created or showed uh, this logical architecture. What I want to do in this episode and two other follow-on ones is to answer the question, well, how do you go about building a logical architecture because we saw the differences in lesson 190 between a logical and physical architecture. Typically, we would create a logical architecture first and then these components either fit into a monolithic single deployment system or maybe different services. So let me show you a technique that I do not recommend. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, um, uh, let me show you what happens. Um, we can say, well, where do I start? I've got a blank screen. Well, we could start by thinking about the major entities that exist in the SysOps squad because we have tickets, uh, customers, uh, we have tickets that they create, and then experts that go out in the field and fix the problem. Uh, these are the three primary entities that the SysOps squad application deals with. And for those of you who are going to go back to 190, this is a trouble ticket system uh, where customers can enter in trouble tickets and our field experts go out and fix their problem. Well, one approach is to say, well, what do we do about customers? I know, let's create a customer manager component. And that's that logical component from lesson 177 that we saw. And um, things a customer can do that this component would manage is of course register with the site, sign in, update their profile, uh, create a profile, notify a customer, and so on. But what about tickets? Ah, <clears throat> I know, let's create a ticket manager. And in that component, we'll put all the kind of stuff that happens with tickets, creating and canceling tickets, assigning and routing those tickets, completing them, sending out a survey, and receiving uh, the completed survey from the customer. Oh, but then we've got an expert. I know, let's create an expert manager. And that deals with all the stuff with experts in that kind of entity adding experts, updating skills, updating location areas, maintaining a schedule, and so on. So now we have three main architectural components. Welcome, everyone, to the Entity Trap. This is an anti-pattern. This approach I would highly not recommend. And let me show you why there's a problem here. Uh, the first problem has to do with this word manager there. Um, in other words, the first problem we have with the entity trap is that we did create some components based on entities, but these are non-self-describing names. What does customer manager do? Well, I guess it manages customers. Oh, I have a better example. What does the ticket manager actually do given that name? Well, I, I suppose it manages tickets, but that's what the whole system does. It's a ticket management system. So you see the first problem is we look at the name of the component and we have no idea what it does. Uh, the second problem is that these components like ticket manager here can become too big. Everything that has to do with ticket goes under this single architectural component and it really starts losing its purpose. 
How many of you, as, during your uh, experience as a, as a developer uh, in your life, have ever coded a utility class? Maybe it's utility.cs or util.java. Um, well, I can raise my hand and say, yes, I have quite often. Well, that's very similar to the entity trap because the other problem with the entity trap is that these components just become a dumping ground for unrelated functionality. As a matter of fact, a really good example is the fact that the ticket manager is sending out a survey and then receiving that survey from a customer. Uh, yes, it has to do with tickets, but we really had no other place for that. Uh, so we start to see that these components just become dumping grounds. Well, it turns out that that word manager there is the problem. How do we know if we're in the entity trap? Ah, using words like manager to describe a particular component. Uh, the survey manager, well, what does it do? It manages surveys, I guess. Uh, supervisor is another kind of word uh, that might indicate, ooh, let me stop and back up. I might be in the entity trap. Uh, a ticket controller, what does that do? Well, it controls tickets, I guess, but it doesn't describe actually what it does. Handler is another common one. A customer handler, what does that do? <laughs> and also helper is another kind of word to describe a component, uh, an architectural component uh, that might tell you you're in the entity trap. Um, three others that are common, uh, the engine, the of course the ticketing engine, um, for lack of a better word, we throw engine on it. I have no idea what that does. A coordinator or processor, these are all the kind of words that if you start using these a lot, please step back and say, oh, we're in the entity trap. And of course, it will start creating all sorts of, well, <clears throat> as you saw, um, meaningless names overloaded functionality and dumping grounds. Um, if you find that you actually need these things, then quite frankly, you don't need an architecture. What you really need is a CRUD-based scaffolding. So, um, so this has been the entity trap, lesson 191. Now, in two weeks, I'm going to show you in lesson 192, another approach that's actually good and then in two weeks after that, I'll show a third, or I, I should say a second good approach for being able to identify uh, those architectural components. Uh, so this has been Lesson 191, uh, The Entity Trap. Please be aware of this and avoid it as much as you can. So stay tuned in two more weeks for a follow-up lesson on some good approaches uh, to identifying architectural components. Thank you so much for listening.